What's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on your Monday night? Hope you had a great weekend, a fabulous weekend, a weekend like no other. I hope it was the most weekendiest weekend that you've ever experienced. I, I restrung the shock mount on my microphone. So you're going to be getting much better quality sound, I'm sure, from this show than ever before. Uh, as you know, uh, the Tom Gully show.com is where you can see 200 and actually hear 200 podcasts, 270 of them. One, at least one of them has to be entertaining for you there. You can also go to our merch store and get stuff like Terry knee did, or somebody did No, Terry knees got the 20 ouncer. This is Hugh or Julian. I can't remember which. Uh, we got mugs, we got hats, we got shirts, we got long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts, we got hoodies, we got sweatshirts, we got pint glasses, we got shot glasses, we've got travel mugs, we've got shower curtains, we've got computer bags. You name it, it's there, man. Or you can just go to cafepress.com slash the Tom Gully Show. It's all down there in the crawl. I looked up my records, and we have gotten, since February... Uh, late February, uh, mid-February, okay, early February, I think, three three donations at paypal.me 
slash Tom Gully show, which is a little demoralizing. Uh, and when I say little, I mean crushingly demoralizing. However, however, ladies and gentlemen, at present, we are at 2,657 view hours. And that's all because of you fine people. And one of these days we'll be monetized and then there's no stopping us. You can also go to Patreon and get all the stuff that, uh, that we are too scared to put anywhere else. Let me tell you today about 50 slang terms, as I mentioned earlier, back in the 20s or 30s. As we get closer, there'll be slang terms that we use more frequently to this day. Um, and we'll get to that in just a second after I go through some of your chats. And I don't do this very often, but I'm going to do it today. Tomorrow, our show will be about We Are the World by USA for Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Aku Mugen is burning his fingers with a heat gun right now. <laughs> Terry Nieses can't hear you. Just kidding. Well, see what happened was, um, not only did I have the most spectacular week of my broadcasting career last week, I worked all weekend as usual. And I was very tired Sunday when I got home and I bumped into the microphone and knocked it over and it, I looked at it and went, okay, I'm restringing this thing. And now it's back to normal. Now I can quit complaining about it. John Ziermite says, I could use a TGS bath mat. I will look into that. I do need to check out the Cafe Press catalog and see if they got any new stuff. Joker Fish says, hello. Hello, Joker. The chef is in the house, Randy Ramos. And he's chefing it up. My wife says, yes, can't wait to get you monetized, Tom. You deserve it. Well, thank you. Thank you, my wife. I, I sense maybe you're someone who's been here before that changed their screen name for humorous effect and um, now has to be stuck with it. <laughs> I don't know. doop a doop do who we know better as Karen Garvey, says, monetized. Terry nee says, I dig it. Lyndon is here and says, hello, all. My wife says, it's SG. Oh, it's SG Fanboy. Awesome. Awesome. Good to see you, SG. Good to see you. Nice to see all of you, of course. It's weird. We had uh, over 100 viewers of our last program, but StreamYard calculates them from all of the places that I send this program, one of which is my Facebook page and one of which is my Twitter page. So I th we didn't get the amount of views that I thought we would on YouTube, but that's okay. Wild Bill says, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Wild Bill. Uh, Terry nee says, I dig it, Big Daddy. Do I say Big Daddy on this show? Because I say it all the time in my, my real life. Um, if you saw the show Lost, I am like Sawyer in many ways, of course. But one of the biggest is that I have a variety of benign nicknames for people. And I call people Chief, Big Daddy, Cowboy, whatever. I use them all. The Reverend, wait a minute, we've got, okay, so it's Wild Bill on Facebook, and then it's Reverend Wild Bill on uh, YouTube. Got to keep track of that. Aku Mugen says, removing decals from a Mack truck, and I don't have a rubber wheel, so burning fingers. Oh, that sucks. That's almost as bad as, as like, a friend of yours buys a car where somebody put that cheap tint in it themselves that bubbles up and, you know. You have to help him remove it with a blow dryer. It's awful. Reverend Wild Bill says, Gullerinos. Yeah, well, that's that's the one I like. But you can be gully heads. You can be gully gang. I don't care. I don't care. It don't matter to me, none. I don't care. Hey, if you'd like to like, subscribe, and share the show right now, those likes, especially on YouTube, and those shares and those subscribes, man, they help us out so much, and they don't cost anything. And I say that after just having begged you all for money. Uh, 
Randy Ramos says, Chief Big D is watching with Randy Ramos, digging the show. Shout out to Noah the Great. Hey, Noah the Great, how you doing? Uh, Sandy Eastman says, hi, Tom, for me and everybody at the police department. That's right. Sandy Eastman works for the police department in Las Vegas. And she has a uh, extensive police background in uh, her family. So Sandy Eastman has been a follower of the show for a long time. She's one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. And uh, I haven't I've, I called her a couple times here and couldn't get a hold of her. But we need to talk again soon. Uh, Kahuna's here, says, hey, gang. Lyndon says, in the world of construction, everyone has a nickname. Well, it's like sports. Uh, Sandy says, she's working. She's working. She's a hard worker. She may not be able to reach the top of her minivan when she watches it because she's a little shorter, but she's a hard worker. Uh, people saying hi to each other. We always love that. We love a chill, cheerful chat room. Um, in the world of sports, you get a lot of nicknames. I had so many nicknames. They'd call me Gulls. I had one team. They called me Scrap Iron. Uh, there's a lot of them. Terry Nee says, yikes, policing Las Vegas. God bless you. One of them was gaviota because it was I played with a bunch of Spanish guys, and that's the word for seagull. Um, so, yeah, policing Las Vegas. Much more difficult than leaving Las Vegas. Hmm. I guess I better get my thing open. You guys know how I like to have my thing open when I'm doing my thing. Uh, whoops. Man, oh man. Okay, that ought to do it. I don't want that one, I want that one and that one. All right. I, Dan... I, as always, have a selection of fine thematic photos for you to put you in the spirit of the 1950s. Behind me here is McDonald's, which a lot of uh, drive-up fast food chains began in the 1950s. So 15-cent hamburger at McDonald's. At McDonald's. Come on. No, my, my, here we go. We're okay now. Everybody, let's just, we're okay now. We're back on the beam. We're back on the beam. Okay. <coughs> um, so, oh man, oh man. And I've got Wired here. Wired, the discount uh, energy drink. Uh, let's start off with Beatnik. Beatnik, of course. Uh, the term Beatnik, that's, just defining of a person that followed the most popular subcultures of the 50s. But uh, columnist Herb Cain added the Nick, uh, which was kind of derived by something else I'm going to show you later, uh, which is the satellite Sputnik, uh, to uh, describe the Beatnik generation and people in it. A typical Beatnik was a free spirited artist who rejected social conventions, man. And uh, Jack Kerouac and uh, On the Road, that whole getting away from it. And I don't need to have a house and possessions, man. You might think this one arrived earlier, but it didn't. It was in the 50s. And that's cool. Hey, man, that's cool. In the 50s, it became mainstream with the youth of America. Anything trendy or desirable from... Uh, you know, fashionable outfit to a catchy song on the radio was described as cool. And that's why Fonzie is... We all saw Pulp Fiction. Backseat Bingo. The 1950s, you know, the United States had cars and lots of them up to the 50s. But in the 50s, car culture began. That's when, you know doing things in your car and, and having, you know, better seats and better radio and better everything happened. 
And so backseat bingo was one of many, many, many car related terms that sprung up during the 50s. And backseat bingo referred to hanky panky, let's call it, making out, necking, uh, parking, some people called it at the time. And uh, this next one, people still kind of use this. I remember when people used it all the time, but and I still use it a lot because I use all sorts of antiquated lingo. I love it. I love it. And this one is pad. Um, pad means any place that you live. You know, let's go back to my pad. Uh, the beatniks kind of used it as a place to crash or a room to use to recover from whatever wild debauchery they were doing. But pad meant, you know, hey man, have you been over to his pad? You know. Now this next one I love because um, <clears throat> it's part of a song called Kooky, Kooky, Lend Me Your Comb. And uh, that was done by uh, Ed... Um, he was on um, 77 Sunset Strip. Ed Burn, Burns. And um, so this one is Ginchy. If something was Ginchy, it meant excellent or attractive. Okay? And it was used a lot in the 50s. Of course, it's fallen out of favor now. But Baby, You're the Ginchiest was the end of the song. I've got smog in my noggin ever since you made the scene. And if you don't let me cool you out. Anyway, um, at the very end of the song, he says, baby, you're the ginchiest. So ginchy. Oh, did I put a thing up yet? Did I put one of my? No. Oh, God, I've, I've done you all a disservice. Well, a pox upon me for a clumsy lout. Um, this is, uh, one of the things that happened in the, are you, are you going to really, are we going to play that game StreamYard? This is Sputnik. And this was the Russian satellite that went up and had everybody, you know, upset. This one, I think probably you heard during the show, happy days a lot. And it, it kind of came back for a little while and that's cruising for a bruising. Now, there's multiple ways you can interpret this one. Um, that was an excuse to pick a fight. You know, someone that was cruising for a bruising. You know, it's like, hey, buddy, you better shut up. You're cruising for a bruising. Um, sometimes in the 70s, though, and it was probably with the advent of happy days, the meaning changed from cruising to give a bruising to cruising to get a bruising. So in the 50s, um, you would you would say it like you're going to do it. And then in the seventies, it meant maybe careful or you're going to get beat up a person insulting their friend with a short temper would qualify for the second definition. And this one here, I think maybe people use a little bit these days. I don't know. Maybe not the kids, but, um, dream boat probably started during the forties, but during the fifties, it really went, you know, overboard. It was uh, any person, usually a man, but not always, worth swooning over. Um, Elvis Presley, James Dean, Marlon Brando, they were all... Why don't I just put Elvis up there? I, I thought I had an Elvis picture in here. Doesn't, where the heck is my Elvis picture? Oh, man, I forgot to put Elvis in here. I converted that daggone thing. I have Chuck Berry, but he's not a dreamboat. And we all know this guy would not be classically described as a dreamboat. But anyway, a little more show promotion. I will put this up next. This is one of the, a lot of nuclear and atomic testing took place during the 50s. And so I'll just put that there for a second. You guys can all duck and cover. Okay, if you really wanted to ramp up your slang in the 50s, you needed to add the word vil at the end of anything. Um, you could take a square and the uh, three-dimensional evolution of square, which was cube. And that guy's a real cube. And that's a boring person. And uh, you would turn him in a whole town of those people. So Squaresville 
or Cubesville. So, you know, that boring person that works next to you. Yeah, he's from Squaresville, Daddy-O. Your uncle that keeps wanting you to get a haircut. Yeah, that guy's the mayor of Cubesville. So there you go. And here's another Ville one. And this one is uh, Ennsville. And that's like a, a place that's full of, you know, awesome things. So if uh, you live in a small town and you're going to go to the big town or you were at the big town, you would say, oh, wow. We went to Dallas last week and man, it was Ennsville. Oh, and that just means it was, you know, super awesome. There's there's a lot of these Vill ones, by the way. I'm just going to tell you in advance. Um, incidentally, jukeboxes. They always had jukeboxes, but the 50s were a time of great economic uh, prosperity in the United States, and thus the teenagers of the day had not only probably more disposable income, but they had been marketed to the way teenagers had never been marketed to before. So there were places that teenagers hung out. There were things that teenagers did that were commercial concerns. And one of them was the malt shop or whatever. And rather than having music there on little radios at every table uh, that people would bring in, they just decided, why don't we make five, 10 cents a pop and let them pick their own music? So jukeboxes became extremely popular during during the 50s. 50s. Let's see, what's this? Hmm. I'm sorry, these days I'm on alert from a news organization, so I got to check things. Antsville. Antsville. That was any spot that made a person feel like they were packed you should have been at the club Friday night, man. It was Antsville. It means it was packed. It could be a theater. It could be a sock hop. It's just a lot of people. Antsville. Now, this one, again, I don't know if they're using a lot these days, but they up until recently used it a lot, and that's burn rubber. Okay? And this became huge in the 50s. It started, actually, as a, like a technical term. But then it became slang for the car and street racing culture of the 50s. You've all seen uh, Rebel Without a Cause and the big car race in it. Well, if uh, you really wanted to get moving, hey, let's burn rubber. Let's get out of here. So there you go. Burn rubber. Uh, this one is, isn't the, this is a little vulgar, but it's called Vomit on the Table. And this phrase meant another way to say, speak up or spill your guts. So you'd say, you know, hey, what happened Friday night? I don't really want to go in. Hey, come on, vomit on the table, all right? Tell us what happened. That was an actual slang during the 50s. I hate to tell you. Speaking of uh, jukeboxes, there's Chuck Berry. He was big in the 50s. There's old Chuck Berry. Now, get pinned. Get pinned was synonymous with going steady. Now, this was somewhat literal because guys would sometimes give a girl a pin. And certainly in college, you give a girl your sorority pin. And yeah, I pinned her last weekend. I gave her my pin. So yeah, uh, you guys, the way you're dating, you'll be getting pinned no time. So get pinned was one. Now, off the cob is an interesting one. Off the cob. So corny, all right? We all went over that in the last you know, decade or two off the cob is something that is poised for a comeback. It's something that was once popular, became unpopular. People just didn't do it anymore. And if it's making a comeback, it's off the cob. So vinyl records, definitely off the cob. Okay. They had their dormant period, but now they're off the cob. They're making a comeback. I love that one. I love that one. Uh, and beatniks loved this one because they, they wanted to be the ones that knew what was cool. It would bring back older things, like hipsters today, kind of. Climb the six-foot ladder. Climb the six-foot ladder meant not, not climb up, meant climb down. Uh, and that just means somebody's dead. 
you know, or they're going to die. Say, hey, if you don't slow down when you're driving, you're going to climb the six foot ladder. Uh, atomized, bagged, incognitoed, and skunky. It's four different, four different slang terms. Man, we went out last night and got atomized, or we got bagged, or we got incognitoed, or we got skunky, and those are just four of countless slang terms during the 50s for getting severely drunk. Getting very, very drunk. Uh, this one, Passion Pit, that was what they used to describe drive-in theaters, which were at their peak in the 1950s. There were more than 4,000 of them by the end of the 1950s, but it was more than just going and seeing a you know B-movie with your friends. Drive-ins was the place, you know, drive-in was the place to bring a date. And so, because everybody was making out and stuff, they became known as passion pits, the drive-ins. I love the drive-in, and, and there's still drive-ins out there. Today, the drive-ins, um, you don't have that little speaker anymore. Let's face it, stayed out in the elements in rain and snow and bitter freezing cold uh, that weren't that great. Uh, somehow, the, maybe the movie sounded you know, fine on a drive-in speaker. But nowadays, they uh, have uh, low-power FM transmitters, and they just go ahead, and in stereo, they just transmit the sound of the movie, which is awesome. Although, you have to worry about your car battery, unless, like me, you bring your boombox with plenty of batteries. Last time I was at the drive-in, with the girl that lived across from me in Naples, Florida, we went to see Spider-Man 2, I think, the first Spider-Man 2. And uh, it was the one with Dr. Octopus in it, whatever. So we went there, and it literally was outside Naples, and it was in a, like, like a real... It wasn't in a swamp, but there were those kind of trees, you know, and stuff, and you drove back into this area where the, the drive-in was and it was so hot and humid that I have to keep turning my car on and turning on the AC and we both looked at each other about halfway through it and went this is fun but we need to come back in the winter it was just too hot uh, agitate the gravel and that's a term hot rodders use that meant to is basically another burn rubber uh, ape. Now, ape doesn't refer to the animal. It means going crazy. It's like Sam went ape over that new milkshake or whatever. Oh, you'll go ape over this. So going ape meant be very, very uh, excited. Bad news began being used for uh, a term, not literally bad news, but a person that was de depressing or difficult to be around, you know. Man, that dude is bad news. Um, bash. Now, bash could mean, you know, uh, to insult somebody. But in the 50s, it was a party. So, you know, oh, man, it was a bash. This next one is one I use to this day, and that's blast. Oh, we had a blast. Man, I had a blast doing that. I really did. Uh, Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine, very, very happy. We all remember the song, I'm doing fine on Cloud Nine. Well, that started during the 50s. Cranked. I'm so cranked about the concert tonight. That's being very excited. Uh, cut out. Man, we got to cut out. And that just means leave very, very quickly. Dibs. I was surprised to learn that dibs started during the 50s. Dibs means what you think it means. It's what it means today. I got dibs on that. That means I have prior claim to that. Uh, dig, you dig, um, I dig that. You, I dig that means I really, really like it. You dig means do you understand. Don't have a cow. Bart Simpson did not invent that. That just means don't freak out. Uh, you'll flip. Oh man, you will flip over this. It just means you will uh, 
be very excited about it. They have a lot of terms for being excited about stuff. Uh, heat. That's the term for police. And that started during the 50s. Now, westerns were very, very popular, both on television and in the movies during the 1950s. So if you've ever heard anybody say, meanwhile, back at the ranch, well, in the 50s, they would say that if someone was telling a story and they started to wander off the main point, somebody would say, meanwhile, back at the ranch, like, hey, get back to what we're talking about here, or whatever. Uh, let's see, peepers. Peepers were eyeglasses. Punch it meant to what it does today, I think, with a lot of guys means accelerate fast. Rattle your cage is a 50s term, and it meant, you know, making you angry. Um, let's see. Uh, split. Let's split. That just means to leave. Uh, threads. That was, a, you know, dig these threads. That was obviously a, a term for clothes. Some of these are probably pretty obvious to you, but they all started during the 50s. And this last one is Word from the Bird. And that's from a 50s song that you've heard probably called bird, 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 the word, bird, 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 bird. Well, um, Word from the Bird means it's the truth, you know. It's like, uh, hey, I think Pete and Sandy are going steady. Word from the bird is, you know, they're already dating. Word from the bird meant this is the straight scoop. This is the truth. And there you go. A couple other things I can show you from the 50s. They're all female actresses. There she is, Elizabeth Taylor, big movie idol. There is Sophia Loren or Lauren, whatever she wants to be called. My book is fine. Is probably a better perspective on her that she's more famous for, but that's the picture I have. And then, of course, the number one movie star of the 50s in terms of ladies is probably Marilyn Monroe. And there she is in all of her glory. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is slang from the 50s. We will do the 60s at some point. As I mentioned earlier, we will be covering... We are the world, the way it came about, all the things that went into actually having it happen, the, and, you know, the etymology of the song and how it was written and changes and the, all the allowances they made for the mega superstars that were in that music video and the song itself. So we will cover that tomorrow. Tomorrow, I love you. Tomorrow. You're always a day away. Let's see here. Oh boy, we got a lot of chat to go through. Bird, bird, bird. Now I'm not gonna be able to get that out of my head. Bird, bird, bird. Bird's the word. Um. Let's see here. Aku says I was a third generation of the same nickname. Well, what's the nickname? Uh, my wife, who we know better as SG Fanboy. Just tell me which one you want to be called, SG. You know, Tom, I watch every show. I can't always chat. What with my pesky life and all. SG, I appreciate that, man. I love that, man. Thank you. Thank you. That is uh, quite a compliment, and I appreciate it. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, Tom, I wish you would open your thing. Yes, i got to get my thing. Oh, Gully's Travelers instead of Gulliver's. Well, I am 6'5", and from time to time, smaller people do want to pin me to the ground with little ropes and stuff like that. Um, SG says, flock of sea gullies. Now, that's that's an inventive one. That's an inventive one. I, I don't see here. I can't control any of these, so I encourage people to use the ones that they want to. Terry is laughing. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, Crystal had five cent burgers. See, that's the difference between the South and the North is that the people from the North, what is this hair doing in front here? So I got to go to this side. It just needs a little more of that. There we go. Um, people from the North would say White Castle had five cent burgers. And when I was a kid, I'm the oldest of six. And so my parents, you know, when we were little, they didn't have a lot of money. They were just starting out, you know, and and had six kids, and, and a big treat for us, you know, treat, big treat, and probably for my mom, not having to cook and whatnot, 
was to go to White Castle. And we were small, so I mean, it was, you know, just a couple of White Castles, two, three of them would take care of you, fine, probably two kids. And they just felt like a regular hamburger in your hand because you had small hands. And five cents, yeah, they were cheap. They were cheap. It was Sparky. Now, see, that's another name I call somebody. Uh, hey, what's up, Sparky? Uh, <laughs> there was also a guy on a basketball team that we started calling Sparky because he was the spark plug. He hated it. Uh, Rim Wild Bill says, Crystal had some of the best chili with their oyster crackers. There's two places that you can get really good chili. Wendy's has great chili and Steak and Shake. Oh, is the chili good there? Terry Nee says, snapping fingers, daddy-o. Hey, by the way, one of my favorite, I have two favorite episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Big favorites. I mean, I love all of them, but, but my two big favorites. Number one is daddy-o. It's, it's, it's a movie called daddy-o. And then the other one is called Side Hackers, about motorcycle riders. But Daddy-O is really good. It's Daddy-O is awesome. I love that saying, too. Hey, Daddy-O. Uh, home Plate? I don't know what that is. I'm confused. Backseat Bingo. <laughs> oh, 69. Uh, Wild Bill says, I had a hearse that we played Backseat Bingo in. Ooh, that's... That's interesting. It was great for drive-in theaters. Yeah. I thought it was Gitchy. You mean like Gitchy, Gitchy, yeah, 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 yeah. Gitchy, Gitchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke a lot of coffee. Free your lady mama. Uh, I've never heard that. I've heard the Ginchiest, though. Reverend Wild Bill says, sometimes had a, his and hers coffins in it. Hey, now. Uh, OGRV. People saying hi, people saying hi. Um, go take a long walk off a short pier. Lyndon, that's a good one. That's a good one. I've loved that one. Don't drop your teeth. That's another one. Uh, pretty, pretty cloud looks so bright. Let's see, that's SG. Says, ever read Growing Up Absurd by Paul Goodman? Interesting read. No, but I'm gonna. Pop, soda. Well, that was a loud noise. Um, there used to be a map on the internet that you could go to that charted the United States by color, where they uh, the people called it pop, soda, Coke, because some people call all brands Coke, which I think is a little weird, but they do. And then phosphate. Some people still call it phosphate. It's mostly in the Northeast. And they charted that on a map it's interesting when I, when I grew up it was called pop we called it pop now typically i would ask for it by the brand name because we didn't have that at our house ever till i was in high school or something so normally when we got that we were allowed to have it at my grandmother's house so you, and she had all different varieties. She loved that stuff. So I would ask for it by brand name. Reverend Wild Bill says, does anyone remember going to a diner and each table had a miniature jukebox on it, even at the counter? I do remember that. And there are still places you can go to that have the little mini old school where you moved the, at the top, it had a little set of little tabs that you would move to see the various songs. Yes, I do remember that. Uh, Julian Zizer says, my wife just downloaded it. Thanks. You know, um, there's a couple of companies that make little radios that look like those jukeboxes. And then, then they'll play the radio or you can Bluetooth them and they'll play whatever you want. Now, it still has a bunch of old school songs in the little thing there, but that the music doesn't come with it, but it looks real. Got Chuck Berry, King of the Duck Walk. You, you got that, man. 
uh, one time on Hullabaloo A Go Go, Trini Lopez was hosting and uh, Chuck Berry. So Hullabaloo was this show that had all these great musical acts and they would come on and do their big hit. Okay. So there'd be like four, sometimes five uh, groups or single artists that would come in and do their popular hit, their hit that was big on the charts right that second. Then they did this little thing where they would sing all the other top 10 or top 20 songs. So you might have the mamas and the papas singing a song by the Beach Boys or whatever. So they would sing all these songs. Then at the very end of the show, they would have a special guest on for Hullabaloo A Go-Go. And it was set up like a go-go club. It had go-go dancers on it and people sitting in little tables and booths around and an artist would come on and perform live well trini lopez was hosting once and chuck berry came out and started doing his thing and trini came out and was like chuck there's a song i've always wanted to do with you and i was wondering if maybe we could play blah, blah, blah. do you think we could do that song and chuck berry and this was hugely controversial at the time hugely he goes, well, why don't you just whip it on out then? And then they played the song. I have that on DVD, by the way. Uh, yep, Bill, it was great. If I couldn't get some coin out of my parents. <laughs> Jokerfish says, somehow vomit on the table reminds me of John. I hit her. I don't even know what that's about. Uh, pinned her has a whole new meaning. Well, yeah, it can, it can also have the wrestling kind of connotation. Um, let's see here. Karen Garvey says, growing up absurd, yes, question everything. People saying hi, people saying hello, we always like that. Uh, let's see here. Nothing like the back row of the drive-in or close to the back row. Well, you always had that guy that would come by with a flashlight. and uh, You always had those dudes that would try to sneak four guys in the trunk into the drive-in. Why, I don't know, is a dollar to get in or $3 per car, no matter how many people were in it. So anyway, we still have a couple drive-ins around here in the Atlanta area. Yeah, you can find them. There, there's a couple websites that will list the currently existing drive-ins for you. Boombox. Yeah, I had my boombox there. Tuned in. Uh, I still have a giant boombox with a cassette and CD and it's so huge you carry it on the shoulder. Those are hard to find now, especially with CD players in them. They are difficult to find. You used to be able, I had a Sony one that I had for about 20 years and the movers broke it. Um, he, he bashed my kids. <laughs> SG. He, he trashed my kid, bashed them, he bashed them. My teacher, Mrs. Crash, Crabtree is an Ill, real L7, says Jokerfish. You mean Mrs. Crabtree from Little Rascals? Uh, SG says, SG is fine. Good. Good deal. Uh, Dupe Doo says, Rev, do you still have working cassettes? I bet he does. Terry says, so Tom, my family has been in the Naples area since the 50s. Have you been to Goodland? I don't know if I have. I lived right across the street for an amusement park, but it was an amusement park for very small children. And it was called Kings something, Kings something or other. But I don't think I've been to Goodland. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, the Ribbon Wild Bill says, the last White Castle we had was in Buckhead, the only one in North Georgia. Crystal was, yeah, people from the South, they like Crystal. Uh, yes, I still do have cassettes and a pencil for emergencies. That's why pencils have erasers. Uh, Julian's Jesus, it seems like in the 50s when mass media began to invent or popularize slang. Um, eh, there was always slang, but I think Julian, you have a point. I think that, that, uh, that's when it got injected into mass media and made it really prevalent. Uh, I think before that slang started with people and spread to the media. I think in the fifties, you may have a point it would get into the media and then spread to people. Um, Terry Nee says home plate equals backseat bingo. Okay. Well now, Hey, pop stopped at Pittsburgh. <laughs> okay. Star Trek Royce says, what a weird dream you had. 
I'm, I can't say anything bad about that or you, even though I don't understand what it means because you have the word Star Trek in your, uh, screen name. Uh, Ronald Bateman says, hello guys, stone green host. Yes, I am officially rated stone green by not even a show. Uh, I'm, I'm eternally green. My rating can never change. Julian Caesar says, I bet the movie companies really wish the drive-ins were still in business once the pandemic shut down their normal theaters. Well, you know, that's a good point, Julian. I bet the, I bet the movie theaters just kept cranking on along, even though a lot of movies did not release during COVID. Goodland was fun when I used to go there. Buzzards are their official drinks, says Ronald Bateman. Well, Ronald Bateman, much more of an aficionado of Naples than I was because I met the girl across the hallway Let's just say we just went out for dinner and stuff. We didn't really, you know, we'd go up to Tampa and hang out at the Hard Rock and stuff. Randy says, look like I'm going to get White Castles tonight. I wish they had White Castles here in Dallas. But you can get them frozen and then microwave them. They're, they're close. They're, they're good enough. But you have to buy the pickle chips separately. So tonight... I'm having uh, chimichangas or enchiladas. I can't remember. Uh, Reverend Wild Bill says, I still have working 8-tracks and 8-track recorder. As I, Bill and I have talked to this many times. My, I still have a Wallen Sack 8-track player and recorder. You just got to be very careful now with your 8-tracks because the old ones that you had in the 70s and 80s, if if they were glued together, they they will break during a program switch. So, be careful with that. Be careful, kids. Tom Gully Show cares. Uh, I also have tons of working tapes, CDs, and records. Says Ronald Bateman. I have eight hundred CB CDs in the next room. Uh, I have tons of wax. Says Reverend Wild Bill. Ronald Bateman says I make tape loops for my weird noise projects. That's cool. Oh, by the way, the phone lines are open. Should have said that earlier, 972-994-6822. I have a nice reel-to-reel. -reel. I do, too. It's a Tascam. Um, Drive-ins exploded during COVID. Joe Bob Briggs. I don't know how many of you remember Joe Bob. He, I think he still lives in Grapevine up here in uh, Dallas area. He used to have a drive-in movie like review thing and everything else. He may still have a website with all that up. Terry Nee says, Stans, Little Bar, Marco Island Lodge are in Goodland. Okay. I, I didn't go to Marco Island, but one time. They got that bridge. When I was there, that bridge was in danger of collapsing. I think they've redone it since. I'm pretty sure Sanibel and all that down there. Anyway, what do we got? 20 minutes left. Oh, by the way, a special episode of Uncle Rico will take place in about 19 and a half minutes. Strongly encourage you folks to go check that out. We'll be off by then. So. Karen Garvey says, Reel to Reel was before my time, but Columbia Record Club was not. Yeah. You know how many kids got in trouble for sending that penny? And then I think it went up to a nickel and then maybe finally a quarter where you got 13 free albums, but they didn't read the fine print. You had to buy like an album a month for three years at the regular price, which was silly expensive. Uh, we used reel to reel tape. You guys hear that? You guys hear that? Let me see something here. I'm going to check the temp. I don't have the... Okay, it's 59 degrees right now in the house. 59, 59. <clears throat> this guy's trying to sell ice cream. How much can you be making on the ice cream? You could drive the van around. That's That, that thing's got to be getting 14 miles to the... Get. I'm, I'm stopped. I won't do it anymore. Uh, Ronald J. Bateman says, I got blackout drunk at stands and then caught some shrimps. Some shrimps. My reel-to-reel -reel was an Akai. Now, uh, Akai was what we used at work. 
<laughs> but we used reel to reel and and ooh, I was using reel to reel in the mid 90s at radio stations. So John Zumite says I have a Telefunken Bajazzo multiband I listen to all the time. Ice cream truck, you bet it. It was uh Karen Garvey says Tom exactly Columbia Record Club was such a scam. It really was. I actually hear the ice cream truck. I know. Time for water cannons, ice cream. That guy, he he knows I don't like him after I walked out when it was raining and just looked at him like, and I, and I even did the arm thing, like, what? You know? Um, <laughs> she says, Mr. Ice Cream is just messing with Tom. He probably is. Darren Nee says, I finally heard the ice cream truck. Get the hose. I can't remember. Wild Bill, what was it at the old place in Utah? It was, I think it was the guys cutting the lawn. I think that was the noise there. And it didn't happen very often. And it wasn't that bad. And uh, out there you want the lawn cut because of all the critters, you know, all the giant bugs. Uh, Ribbon Wild Bill says, God bless his little pointed head. Yeah, he's out there hanging a smoke out the window while he's driving with one hand real slow over the speed bumps in the neighborhood. There was a few things at the old place. <clears throat> at the old place, I had my big screen pointed so I could, I had my controller, I could watch it up till the show started. And uh, Wonder Woman and MacGyver were both on during the show, so I could report what was happening. I thought it was just, I can't remember anything other than the, um, yeah, uh, I bet you don't know how to cut the grass. I, I do too. I was in charge of the grass cutting at the uh, Gully Estate when I lived uh, at home. The neighbor... Should I say neighbors? No, the neighbor wasn't that bad, but I just, did. Just, see, the neighbor would do stuff before the show. He wouldn't do anything during the show. But yeah, there was always an altercation with the neighbor. Remember when he told me I wasn't as funny as Jeff Foxworthy? That was awesome. Um, Julian Caesar says, we used to have a pizza truck that would come around. My aunt came here and heard it one night and got scared. The pizza truck had some weird siren sound. She thought it was some sort of emergency. When I lived in Arlington, Texas, there was a guy who would drive a pickup truck with an entire giant, one of the big ones, barbecue smoker, and he would just stop it. And pretty soon the whole neighborhood was there just because the smell. It was just so good. Uh, by the way, I should let you guys know, and I never got a chance to report this. On my last day in Utah, the neighbor and I made peace. He saw that I was leaving. I had some things I wasn't going to move. I offered them to him. He didn't take any of them, which was weird because I'm sure he you know, could have used them. But, um, but we talked and we got along and he apologized and I apologized for, you know, nothing really. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, Diana O'Brien is here from Shrewsbury, Shropshire. Yes. The pizza truck was the worst pizza ever, by the way. Reverend Wild Bill says, think savage pizza. You know what I did, and something I haven't done in a long time, today I was at the grocery store, and I had to search really hard to find this. It used to be I could find it like that. Now, it's difficult to find. You know those Chef Bayardee pizza kits that, that you, you, know, you do your own dough, and a lot of times moms will make the pizza with their kids and stuff. I hadn't had those in a while, and I was like, man, I kind of like to make a couple of those because there's two in a box. So I got them. They don't give you the Parmesan anymore. So I have to go back to the store because I'm out of Parmesan. I do have some provolone here. I guess I could use it, but um, I forgot something else at the store this morning. My corned beef canned hash. I like, uh, I got to have that. I would love a barbecue truck coming down my road. Terry Nee, you'd love it more if it was in Dallas. I mean, this guy, oh my Lord. And he, he wasn't charging huge prices for it either. 
You know, he, he you go out there with five, ten bucks and come home with a feast. He was super friendly, but you never knew when he was coming by. And, um, you know, he'd stop, take care of it, and then he was gone. <clears throat> he wasn't there for very long. I, re <clears throat> excuse me, I remember um, very clearly, because, see, I worked from home at the time. I was remote for an agency in uh, Houston. And I'd be sitting there and I would smell that and I would sprint out the door because uh, I didn't want to wait in line either. But uh, people saying hi to each other. I love that. Pizza's delicious. Pizza's the best. Shrinkflation. Shrinkflation. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't find it. I'm, and, and they say cheese not included. Now, the picture that they show now is of a real cheesy pizza. It's not the old kind where they just they came with just Parmesan, which made it kind of better, if you ask me, that kind of cheap, you know, just quickie. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to try one with the provolone. I got the provolone for sandwiches, so I can just boop, 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 put it on there. But I'm going to try one with that, but I, I do need to get some Parmesan, and I do need to get some corned beef hash in a can. Love that stuff. Um, Revan said, I do miss the food from Texas. Great food. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Folks saying hi to each other. We love a cheerful chat room. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, kids. Let me make sure I get this figure right here. Um, I got to get the figure. You know, I, I, oh, it's the wrong app. It's a special app for... Let me make sure also I haven't been alerted by anybody at the... No, okay, fine. Uh, there's a special app that you have to have for YouTube Studio, which we creators use. <laughs> and let me see here. Let me get the exact total for you. 2,659 public watch hours. So, I don't know. We average... 25 to 30 a show <clears throat> and it's been increasing we we've gotten over the last 28 days 160 more view hours this last 28 days than the previous 28 days so thank you that's all you that is all you and that means 30 she put us close to 2700 and then that will be 10 more days after that ish, probably 10 or 12, which is because I do five shows, you know, a week. That'll be two or three weeks, I guess. <sighs> Still too long. PayPal.me slash Tom Gully show <laughs> could really bridge the gap. Um, <laughs> like, share, subscribe. Those things super, super, super help us out. So. Uh, down where the family property was near Alice, Texas, a lot of real taquerias. Well, we got them here in Dallas too. I tell people all the time, I can get a better taco at a gas. Oh, the sun's coming in through my blind. Look at that. Well, that's going to be that. I've never had to got to deal with that this time of year. Um, have that. See hash in a can. Tell me more. Yeah. It's corned beef hash in a can. It comes with the corned beef and little tiny squares of potato and the only thing is you really gotta crisp it up you gotta you gotta keep turning it and stuff uh but otherwise it's delicious it's delicious i play the tom gully show in my sunroom during the day <laughs> it looks like i'm doing that now it's just it's uh well whatever Urban Wild Bill says, I play the New York special at night to help me put to sleep. Yeah, the New York special, actually, I was looking at some uh, analytics today, and, and yeah, it, it gets played. You guys are the best. Terry Nee, I try to play it where whenever I can. Best chat room ever. Thank you, Karen Garvey. You are the best. Terry Nee says, oh, I thought you meant hash. No, no. I don't even know what that is. Are you talking about hashish? 
I, I don't I don't even know exactly what that is. Uh, corned beef hash says next to kin, next to kin to spam. Oh, I don't think so. I can't eat spam. Uh, Terry's laughing. Hash is just like marijuana, right? Kinda. <clears throat> I don't know. People would talk about it in college and I'm sure they were, I don't know. I was such an athlete. I, you know, wouldn't do anything that would. Keep me from sportsing at my highest output. Wow. Okay, I'm closing the phone lines now. We don't got enough time to talk to anybody. Vermont Bill says he'll eat anything, doesn't eat him first. Uh, Julian Caesar, we won't know what that is till we get to 70s slang. <laughs> oh, funny. SG says, sure, Tom, act like you don't know. I really know. Uh, and if it moves slow enough, I call it fair game. What did I eat this week? Man, I, I work so much during the weekends. I'm so tired. I've been in this bad habit of getting McDonald's. The world's greatest McDonald's is immediately next to what used to be the CBS radio building in Dallas. And when I'm off work, when I get off work, I am ravenous. And they have all these deals, you know, buy one, get another one for a dollar. And I love a Big Mac, so... Uh, I got to quit doing that. Hash comes from the stickiness of the buds when trimming. You can call it keef, which is basically ash. Okay. Yeah. Collect keef. Okay. And what have we learned tonight? Well, we learned a lot of new 50 slang terms. Uh, we learned that the uh, ice cream guy needs to turn his speaker down, which I guess would defeat the purpose of, you know, here's the thing. Prince, while he was alive, should have made a, a song called Ice Cream or something. I mean, we need, if that was like a hip tune, if, it, if he was playing Mr. Lucky or something, I really wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. But it's just that wonky, a turkey in the straw, awful thing. Um SG, your avatar is cracking me up. I love dark humor. <laughs> we learned that the sun is blinding at the end of the show. Yeah, it's coming right through the top of my blind, like where the blinds start between the blinds and the window frame. So uh, I'll have to do something about that. Now you guys can actually see my eyes. That's amazing. Let's see the reflection from the computer. Uh, people are laughing at the rev. I, I have to tell you, I'm still coming down from, uh, I think I told you guys about it. I did middays on the big giant radio station, anchored the news middays all last week. And it was spectacular. I, it was better than I ever could have imagined. It was so awesome. I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, Tom looks like he's being interrogated. Where did you leave? Why aren't you living in Arizona? We have heard you live in Arizona. Oh, what's the other thing I was going to... I can't remember. There was one other thing I was going to tell you guys, and I can't remember. Tom looks like he's being interrogated. I tell you what, I think I'm going to end the show because... Oh, great to show Tom as always. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to end the show so you guys can definitively get to uh, Rico and hear all the songs and stuff. I may hang out there a little bit. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to make. For, oh, I know. I was going to make those uh, uh, chimichangas or burritos or whatever I got in there. I forget. It's the same thing, right? Peace, says Ribbon Wild Bill. So. So anyways, man, I tell you what, you guys are the best, the very, very best. If you can like, share, subscribe, those things don't cost you anything. That'd be great. PayPal.me slash Tom Gully show. That would be spectacular. There's the Patreon. And if you like to just go, I mean, I've got those podcasts just sitting there on that website. Scroll through them, see if there's something you like. Uh, and uh, I'd like you just to enjoy them. That's the only reason they're there. 
and um, uh, merch, and you can get a shirt with the logo, and people say, that looks like Bewitched. Um, and there you are. So anyway, I suppose, with all that being said, oh, by the way, I will be watching Rico while I'm waiting for my food to get done. Um, I'll be in there. I got a mention today on uh, Uncle Rico earlier. It was the compared me to the guy that was doing front work for Mr. Rogers. And I was like, my hair didn't do that. Uh, but I was so happy to be mentioned, I didn't care. Anyway, um, tomorrow night, we are the world. So I guess the only thing left to say is, the sun's in my eyes. And till next time, we'll see you next time.